Picture a massive fortress of steel, a floating city capable of projecting power across entire oceans. This is the aircraft carrier, a symbol of naval dominance for decades. With its wide flight deck, it can launch and recover fighter jets, helicopters, and drones, making it an incredibly versatile and powerful asset in modern warfare. However, even the most powerful warships aren't invincible. Back in 2005, the maritime world was stunned when the USS Ronald Reagan, one of the world's largest aircraft carriers, was repeatedly sunk in simulations by an unexpected opponent. How could a $100 million submarine outmaneuver and defeat a $4.5 billion supercarrier? This upset highlighted surprising vulnerabilities even in the most advanced naval forces. So what really went on beneath the surface? The USS Ronald Reagan is a nuclear-powered supercarrier from the Nimitz class, part of the US Navy. It's the ninth ship in this class and is named after former US President Ronald Reagan. This supercarrier is truly a behemoth of the seas. Stretching 1,092 feet from bow to stern, this aircraft carrier is longer than three football fields, giving it a massive presence on the water. Its beam measures an impressive 252 feet, ensuring it remains incredibly stable, even in rough seas. The ship's draft, the vertical distance between the waterline and the bottom of the hull, is 37 feet allowing it to navigate through deep waters with ease while carrying its massive load. Speaking of weight, the USS Ronald Reagan has a displacement of around 100, 1,400 long tons, making it one of the heaviest warships ever built. Powered by two Westinghouse A4W nuclear reactors, which drive four steam turbines and four shafts, the carrier boasts an impressive 260,000 shaft horsepower, allowing it to reach speeds over 30 knots. The Reagan can support around 90 aircraft, including both fixed-wing planes and helicopters, making it versatile for various missions like air defense, strikes, early warning, transport, and search and rescue operations. Navies understand how vital aircraft carriers are, so they never send them into combat alone. Instead, every carrier leads a carrier battle group, which, in the U.S. Navy, includes guided missile cruisers, destroyers, submarines, and support ships. In 2005, the USS Ronald Reagan participated in an anti-submarine warfare exercise with the Swedish submarine HSWMS Gotland on loan from the Swedish Navy. During the drill, Gotland successfully simulated sinking the USS Ronald Reagan, exposing weaknesses in the carrier's defenses. Despite having helicopters and destroyers specifically hunting for it, the stealthy Swedish sub slipped past their anti-submarine measures using its advanced torpedoes and stealth coatings to launch mock attacks undetected. This exercise was a valuable learning experience, highlighting both the capabilities of Swedish submarines and the challenges U.S. carriers face encountering them. Even though this event happened almost two decades ago, it left a lasting impact on the world of naval warfare. While it wasn't an actual combat situation, it was part of a war game where the Gotland, a small 1,600-ton Swedish diesel-powered submarine, made headlines. Historically, diesel submarines were noisy and had to surface every few days for air. On the other hand, nuclear submarines can stay underwater for months, are much quieter, and move faster. But the Gotland was different. 
thanks to its Stirling Engine Air Independent Propulsion, or AIP, system. This tech allows it to stay submerged for extended periods without needing to surface, helping it avoid detection by enemy anti-submarine systems. Unlike older diesel-electric submarines that need to surface or use a snorkel to recharge, the Gotland's AIP lets it run quietly and remain nearly invisible to enemy sonar. The Gotland also has other stealth features that keep it off the radar. It's fitted with 27 electromagnets that mask its magnetic signature from magnetic anomaly detectors. The hull is coated with sonar-resistant materials, and the tower is made from radar-absorbing substances. Inside, its machinery is cushioned with rubber acoustic buffers to reduce sonar detection. Plus, with its unique X-shaped rudder and sail, which feature six maneuvering surfaces, the Gotland is highly agile, allowing it to move near the seafloor and make sharp turns with ease. Despite launching multiple attacks on the USS Ronald Reagan, the Gotland remained undetected throughout the exercise. In response, the US Navy decided to lease Gotland and its crew for two years to conduct anti-submarine exercises. These drills made it clear that US undersea sensors were not equipped to handle stealthy submarines like the Gotland. The success of the Gotland in sinking the USS Ronald Reagan exposed serious vulnerabilities in carrier defenses. It showed that even a small, relatively inexpensive submarine could potentially cripple a multi-billion dollar aircraft carrier. This raised important questions for naval strategy. Just how vulnerable are carriers to modern submarines? The real concern for the US Navy isn't a Swedish sub like the Gotland stalking its carriers, but the growing threat from China's AIP submarines. The Chinese Navy's Type 039A Yuan class and Type 032 Qing class submarines are particularly worrying, underscoring the need for improved anti-submarine warfare capabilities. The US Navy took the lessons from this exercise seriously. Leasing the Gotland for two years led naval strategists to realize their undersea sensors needed major upgrades to deal with stealthy submarines. AIP technology, which greatly enhances diesel-electric submarines, has become a priority for modern submarine design, proving that even highly valuable assets like aircraft carriers are vulnerable to underwater threats. Do you think if this hadn't been just an exercise, the USS Ronald Reagan would have been completely sunk? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.